Hi guys, my name is Jimmy Wills Taylor and welcome to Brief Histories. On this channel I make videos of fascinating people in history from all walks of life. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have anybody you'd like me to make a video about and I will get right on that. But today we're heading to 16th century Europe to meet the Jewel of Venice, a powerful poetess with men at the tips of her fingers, Veronica Franco. Veronica was born in 1546, the daughter of a well-known courtesan and Francesco Franco. She was the only daughter amongst the family's three sons and her intellectual life began with sharing her brother's education and private tutors. At the time, Venetian women were not allowed an extensive education and from the day she was born, Veronica had few options to choose from. In Venice, a woman could be only a wife, a scullery maid, a nun or a courtesan and only Cortigiana Wanza's honest courtesans were allowed in public libraries. They had the ability to read and write, be musicians and artists, and to discuss and even influence politics with the powerful noblemen in court. As a young teenager, Veronica decided she wanted to be a God-fearing wife, and by 18 she had been briefly married to the wealthy physician Paolo Paniz. But the union ended badly, and they separated. To support herself, Veronica turned to serving as a cortigiana to wealthy men and was listed as one of the foremost courtesans of Venice by 1565 in the catalogue of all the principal and most honoured courtesans of Venice. Veronica rose through the ranks to consort with some of the leading notables of her day, men such as Henry III of France, who she had a brief liaison with as a political move to gain help for the Venetians in the war against the Turks. She captured the interest of Domenico Venier, a Venetian poet and head of the most renowned vernacular literary academy in Venice, who became her greatest support. Without his patronage, she would have been overlooked and disappeared completely from history. In 1575, her first volume of poetry was published, her Thésrim, containing 18 verse epistles by her and seven by men writing in her praise. She shocked the aristocratic women around her with her bold tongue and sexuality. Franco was thought vulgar and unchaste for women who spoke their minds were so. Veronica's poetry was erotic and sometimes sexually explicit, and she was not ashamed of being a courtesan, but rather celebrated the lifestyle. However, her luck wouldn't last. The plague hit in late 1575, and she fled Venice, and lost much of her wealth when her house and possessions were looted, including her library, one of the largest private libraries on the continent. For years, the bubonic plague threatened to destroy most of Europe, and the religious fanatics took the plague as a sign from their god and preached that this was God's punishment for the litigiousness of the courtesans and the utter depravity that was rooted deep in Venetian society. The courtesans were no longer the powerful creatures they once were. The new power was the Catholic Church. The church began questioning and imprisoning people for their devilish ways Courtesans were labelled witches and many were prosecuted for their crimes. Her son's tutor accused her of practising magic and in 1577, upon her return to Venice, she was arrested by the Inquisition for witchcraft. She used her wit and defended herself before the Inquisition. Her own defence, the help of Venia and others and the possible predisposition of the Inquisitor freed her from the charges, but the trial greatly affected her lifestyle. Her reputation was irreparably damaged and the last of her fortune was depleted. By this time she was raising her two surviving children and her orphaned nephews. Her mother and brother had died from the plague and four of her six children died young. She proposed to the city council that it should establish a home for poor women. She was unsuccessful but continued to support herself and others as best she could. However, her great friend and benefactor Domenico Venier died two years later and Veronica was forced to move to a poor area, now struggling greatly financially. However, in 1580, despite this, she published her second works, Familiar Letters to Various People. It included 50 letters plus two sonnets addressed to King Henry III of France. 
she wrote about the change in Venice and the suffering of women and children. A poem she wrote during poverty spoke of her thoughts of Venice's downfall. We danced our youth in a dreamt of city, Venice, paradise, proud and pretty. We lived for love and lust and beauty, pleasure then our only duty. Floating then tricks heaven and earth and drank on plenty's blessed mirth. We thought ourselves eternal then, our glory sealed by God's own pen. The paradise we found is always frail, against man's fear will always fail. Veronica also contributed a great deal to womankind with her writings, and often encouraged women to become inquisitive and embrace their femininity. When we too are armed and trained, we can convince men that we have hands, feet and a heart like yours, and although we may be delicate and soft, some men who are delicate are also strong, and others coarse and harsh are cowards. Women have not yet realised this, for if they should decide to do so, they would be able to fight you until death. And to prove that I speak the truth amongst so many women, I will be the first to act, setting an example for them to follow. Veronica was arguably the most talented of the courtesan poets of her time. A prostitute, accomplished poet and a hero for her people, she was also one of the most fascinating characters to emerge from Renaissance Venice. Her death at 45 ended a life that had included a decade of wealth and rich history, but also many hardships and difficulties. Learn about more historical figures and follow Brief Histories on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. And find out more at www.briefhistories.co.uk. Check out the other videos on this channel and see what you find. Hey there historians, thanks for watching. If you like that video, feel free to check out some of the others on this channel. Don't forget to head over to the website www.briefhistories.co.uk to check out all the timelines, family history and more. Thanks very much for watching this video guys, I hope you like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and I will see you guys next time.